Good morning, my loyal friends and followers, or good afternoon or good evening, wherever you happen to be. I'm delighted to talk to you today about the new moon in Cancer, which occurred uh, here in Australia on uh, Saturday morning fairly early. Today is Monday. Now, the new moon in Cancer encourages connection with family, finances and feelings. So pay attention to family relationships, projects around the home, attending to your finances, and just noticing how you feel. Listening to your gut is smart. Now, since it is winter here in the Southern Hemisphere, it's time to sleep longer. And the benefits of sleep are often overlooked. Additionally, we are experiencing galactic energy upgrades in our sleep. So the new moon occurred on Saturday, as I said, early in the morning here in Australia, and adjust for your time zone. And this is an ideal time to focus on new activities and projects that involve your home and family. Family relationships can sometimes be a little difficult. And so you may want to repair some difficult relationships within that family. So this time is a good time to start that activity. And, um, you know, sometimes it's difficult to start, but you've got to start somewhere. So give it a crack. Home projects. You know, cancer is all about the home and nurturing and the family. Uh, what, what needs attention around your place? Do the window furnishings need attention, cleaning, replacing? Maybe you need to wash the windows. Mm. Do you need new furniture? Perhaps it's time to rearrange your living room and invite new energy into the room. What about having the carpets steam cleaned? That's happening for me later in the week. I also need to fix the motor on my garage door. Security, cancer. Your family care. Another aspect of cancer energy, other aspects of can cancer energy are nurturing and caring for yourself and for your family. Do you have an elderly relative that would benefit from a little more attention from you? Maybe visit more frequently or take a home cooked meal? Or maybe you don't have a family member like that. Maybe you know somebody who lives alone who would appreciate the odd home-cooked family meal, or even being invited to share a meal with your family. Pay attention to your finances. Are you attaining the financial goals you set? What needs adjusting? Do you need to pay down that debt? It's never good to have too much debt. Do you need to sell something you no longer need? Do you need to reduce your spending? It's amazing how much you can save by, for example, not buying that coffee every day. If you spend $6 on coffee to take away five times a week, that's $30 a week. Comes to about $1,500 a year. Would that help achieve a more important financial goal? Maybe a holiday? Airfare somewhere? Just be aware that our global financial system is being battered. And the more aware you are of how you are spending and using your money, the better you can manage changes which may impact you personally. Cancer energy is about how you feel, as well as nurturing yourself and others. Cancer energy is a water energy. You notice the water in the background on this video. And that water energy is especially sensitive to feeling experiences intensely and also picking up on how others feel. So when you're feeling something, is it your feelings or is it someone else that who's close to you at the time? Now, there are other aspects of cancer energy which are also important, but I'm not focusing on them in this particular video. Sleeping. Sleeping is so nurturing. 
And when we talk about nurturing ourselves, we often interpret that as what we eat and drink. And while that's true, the body also needs to breathe properly. Do you breathe properly? Full breath into the belly, chest and the chin? Do you exercise and obtain adequate restful sleep? Beer is my mantra, B-E-E-R, breathing, eating, exercise and rest. And listening to the gut. Cancer is a water sign and often those with strong cancer energies experience more issues with digestion than most. The gut is very sensitive and can provide you with wisdom about whatever it is you're considering. So just listen to that gut. Sleeping long and soundly. In 2016, Ariana Huffington wrote about sleep in her book, The Sleep Revolution, and I can recommend that. You should be able to get that either online or maybe even in the secondhand shop. And sleep is such an important aspect of our physical mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. As babes, we are encouraged to sleep as it allows us to grow. As we mature, our busy lives often encourage us to party rather than sleep. Or worse, work instead of sleeping. Who do you know in a corporate role who works insane hours and has little time for personal life? Often these folks are under the impression that if they appear to be working so many hours, they are more effective than if they work a more ordered six to eight hours a day. What do you think? Can you hear the swans outside? They're, call they're calling for food. I'm not going to interrupt my, my recording to go and feed them just yet. When we sleep, we allow the physical body to regenerate cells and slough off what is no longer needed. The brain, our mental walk workhorse, enjoys a restful space for allowing the subconscious to process the day's activities and generate ideas to take us to our goals. Emotionally, our bodies are recharged and renewed with fresh energy, ready to react, or not, to the next major occurrence in our field. Good, sound sleep allows your spiritual energy to connect via dreams. There's so much more I could talk about a value of good sleep, but I encourage you to do your own research, and there's so much material online. And read Ariana's book. She's got great ideas. In the Southern, sorry, in the southern Hemisphere, as the days are so short and our nights are so long, Take advantage of the season and allow your body to sleep just a little longer every night, maybe just 30 minutes. And you can adjust this as the days become longer and we approach the equinox in September. If you are in the Northern Hemisphere, however, enjoy those long days, party, enjoy the sunshine, but be sure to discipline yourself to get enough sleep in the summertime. It's tempting to stay up all of those daylight hours. Now, in addition to the reasons already mentioned, we need to sleep to allow our bodies to be upgraded and adjusted to the energies pouring in from the galaxy. The number and intensity of solar flares is the greatest it has been for many years. And Pam Gregory on YouTube, has much to say to support these comments. The planetary energy is pointing to a significant change in our general energy fields. So do yourself a favour and arrange to more time to sleep. And do also know that it's okay to have a short power nap or glamour nap in the middle of the day. 10 or 15 minutes can make a big difference. Do yourself a favour and arrange more time to sleep. The upgrading will be done while we sleep. At the uh, end of this video, there's some notes about tips for sleeping. You might want to check those out. Now, moons. We are currently just out of the energy of a new moon. But 
We've got two full moons in Cancer, two full moons in Cancer this season. The cancer first Cancer full moon came up upon us very quickly within hours of the solstice and at the beginning of the sun's journey into Cancer. And we will have another full moon in Cancer on the 21st of July. This is notionally a blue moon, two moons, two full moons within a sign. And this occurs once every year as we have 13 moon cycles and 12 sun cycles in a year. Molly McCord, check her out on YouTube, says that this allows us to get back to the rhythm of having a new moon before the full moon in a sun sign. And so far this year, the full moon has become has come first and then the new moon. And the energy is a bit, a bit, a bit disrupted. So how should we manage these two full moons in Cancer? You know, having the sun in, in Cancer energy bookended by full moons points us very clearly to the energies of Cancer and the importance of family. Now, your family may be close or distant. You may enjoy your family connections or find them difficult or even toxic. Hmm. Your closest family emotionally may be folk who are not your blood relations. With so many people and families living in different parts of the country and other parts of the world, I suggest you connect with those who are geographically close, who include you in their family circle, or maybe you include them in your family circle. We are humans. We need human connection. Of course, technology, FaceTime and Zoom and other platforms allow us to connect real time. But connecting in this way doesn't have the same as connecting in person, does it? Now, I believe the universe is encouraging us towards group activities and families are the obvious starting point. Pluto is moving from Capricorn into Aquarius for the next 20 years and away from the top-down male, pale and stale leadership we have experienced over the last 16 years or more. Pluto in Aquarius is the power of the people. Our leaders have shown themselves in many instances to be self-focused and certainly not concerned with the people of, with the welfare of the people they lead. So the message is, build your group connections. Start with your family, whoever they are. Those that you find difficult to connect with, send them love and light on the airwaves. See the light of love inside them. We all have light inside of us. Sometimes we hide it. And do not allow unkind and unloving behaviour to encourage you to reciprocate unkindly. Take care of each other in the group. Connect with other groups with synergistic values and directions. Together, this can be a very powerful force in our communities. Focus your intentions and activities on the systems that are obviously broken. Health, education, agriculture. Let us build a new world to reflect our values of honouring the earth and all its inhabitants. Get involved in a local group that is attending to any one of these broken systems. Now, since cancer is also about managing finances, I wanted to make some comments about the petrodollar as any adjustment to that agreement will inevitably percolate throughout the major currencies. So I went researching. And some people don't even know what the petrodollar is, so please go and do this research. It's useful. I found a credible report from the Atlantic Council. See the reference in the notes. Then seeking further, I found another credible report from Morningstar a well-known 
and highly credible publication. And the Morningstar article claims that news about the failure to renew the petrodollar agreement, which expired early in June, is fake news. So what do we believe? Where is Neptune in this story? The mainstream media has been losing its credibility and its audience in line with the waning of Pluto, influ Pluto influence to direct the activities of the people. So is the Morning Star article really true? Or should we believe the Atlantic Council article? I'm providing you with references to both. What do you think? This is the Petro dollar. You see, one of the primary functions of this long Pluto transit through Capricorn has been to reset our finances. Banks and big businesses have already been affected by significant changes to their operations over the last 16 years. The arrival of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology has also been a great disruptor, and will we, we will see more of this. Is the petrodollar agreement? the final straw in this process? I want to talk to you about healing, EE -E scalar healing. What, you say? What? Let me explain. A friend introduced me to this modality over 12 months ago. And as it's my interest is in keeping people healthy and well and methods to prevent illness, I was very happy to, to explore this new system. As our bodies age, we seem to experience more aches and pains. Joints become less fluid and we lose our agility and our vim. My body was diagnosed with a very obvious lower back, sco lower back scoliosis about seven years ago by the chiropractor. It had never bothered me, and I was totally unaware of it. But I was not happy with that news. My body? Not good? Oh. And my body had a few other minor issues also. Remember, I'm no longer 25. So late in 2022, I went first and experienced this energy healing modality. The reality is that we sit in a lounge room with four banks of three computer screens emanating light energy and creating in the center of the room an energy field that is optimum for healing the body. And the recommendation is that we meditate or focus our intention, attention on that part of the body, shoulder, your eyes or whatever, that needs healing for the two hours that you sit lie or even sleep in that room. Usually there are three or four of us in the room at the same time and it's quite affordable. After the two-hour session it is recommended that we take a warm bath with salt and bicarbonate of soda to help the body detox. Remember that the body knows how to heal itself. We simply need to give it the time, the space and the energy. Now, since my initial experience, I have been several more times, and I can claim that my scoliosis has improved, straightened considerably. No, it is not gone. I still also practice yoga on a regular basis, which helps my body stay flexible. But you know what? There are so many more, far more amazing testimonials about the efficacy of this healing modality. You know, it even works on dogs and children with problems and they don't have the mental and conscious focus that we do when we meditate. So if you're interested in checking this out, uh, look at the references which accurately describe the history and development of this process and how it works. I really recommend you do this. It may not help you, but it may help somebody that you know. And remember that we are moving into times when energy healing is prominent and provides an alternative to the pharmaceutical model which has been so dominant in recent history. And there will be a centre accessible for you if you're interested, so check out the references. 
Now, finally, just a little alert. Um, we've got interesting times ahead. There's lots of disruptive energy happening in our universe. And disruptive Uranus is currently going through Taurus. Around the 14th to the 16th of July, Mars will join Uranus in Taurus, giving it energy, giving energy to the disruptive effects of Uranus. Additionally, these two planets are connecting with a fixed star Algol at 26 degrees in Taurus. Now, Algol has a nasty reputation for being the most malefic star in the heavens. I'm not a purveyor of doom and gloom by any means. And it may be that this might be a turning point for some people. I simply suggest that we observe what occurs around that time to you and to others. If you have prominent planets around 25 degrees Taurus, or if any in any of the fixed signs, that's Leo, Aquarius or Scorpio, you may experience some significant disruptions. And do remember that if doors close at this time, that the universe will usually open others and better ones. The old has to go in order for the new to arrive. And remember also that you can't control what happens, but you can control how you respond. Have an interesting time in Cancer Energy, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll talk to you next time.